Chapters 9 through 12 of the Gospel According to Mark from the New Testament in Modern English, translated by Ferrar Fenton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. Chapter 9 I tell you indeed, he went on to declare, that there are some of those standing here who shall not taste of death until they see the kingdom of God appearing with power. And six days later Jesus took Peter, James, and John, and went with him privately by themselves into a high mountain, and he was transformed in their presence, when his garments became sparkling bright, exceedingly white as snow, such as no bleacher on earth could whiten them. Elijah and Moses then appeared to them, and they conversed with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, How delightful it is to be here! Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah! for he knew not what he should say, being as they were exceedingly terrified. A cloud also came, overshadowing them, and a voice came out of the cloud. This is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. And suddenly looking round, they saw no one except Jesus alone with themselves. And while they were coming down from the mountain, he specially instructed them that they should disclose to no one what they had seen, until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. They, however, retained the event in their memory, puzzling themselves about this rising from the dead. They also asked him, Why do the professors say that Elijah must come first? Elijah certainly coming first will restore all, he replied. And how is it written about the Son of Man? That he must suffer much and be treated with contempt. I tell you, however, that Elijah has indeed come, and they have done to him whatever they liked, as it was written about him. Coming then to his disciples, he observed a great mob around them, and the professors engaged in discussion with them. But as soon as they saw him, all the crowd were much astonished, and rushing forward, they saluted him. He then inquired of the professors, What are you arguing against them? Teacher, one of them answered, I brought to you my son, who has a speechless spirit in possession of him, and whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, when he foams and grinds his teeth, and he wastes away i accordingly asked your disciples to expel it but they have not the power <sighs> what a skeptical race he exclaimed in reply <sighs> until when must i remain with you until when must i be burdened with you <sighs> bring him to me they accordingly brought him to him and on seeing him the spirit at once convulsed him painfully and falling upon the ground he wallowed foaming he then asked his father what length of time is it since this came to him? From childhood, he replied, and it often throws him into the fire and into the water so that it may put an end to him. If, however, anything is possible, have pity on us and help us. That depends upon yourself, said Jesus to him. If you only believe, all is possible to the believer. I do believe, exclaimed the father at once. Succor me in my unbelief. Seeing, however, that the crowd rushed together, Jesus rebuked the foul spirit, saying to him, You speechless and deaf spirit, I command you to go out of him and never enter him again. Then shrieking and convulsing him, it took its departure, and he became as if dead, so that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took his hand, lifting him, and he stood up. And having entered a house, his disciples asked him privately, Why were we powerless to cast him out? This sort can only be expelled by means of prayer and fasting, he told them in reply. Then going away from there, they traveled through Galilee, and he did not wish anyone to know it, because he was teaching his disciples and repeating to them that, The Son of Man will be betrayed into the hands of men, and they will murder him. But having been murdered, he will rise again after three days. They did not, however, comprehend this statement, and they were afraid to ask him. When they had come to Capernaum and had entered the house, he asked them, What were you discussing among yourselves on the road? But they kept silent, because upon the journey they had been arguing as to who was the greatest. Then sitting down, he called the twelve and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, let him be the last and the attendant upon all. And taking a little child, he placed it in the midst of them, and caressing it, he said to them, if any one shall accept one child such as this for my name's sake, he accepts me. And if any one accepts me, he accepts not myself only, but
but my sender. John said to him, Teacher, we saw a man casting out demons by means of your name, and we forbade him, because he was not one of our followers. Jesus, however, said, <laughs> Do not forbid him, for no one who works a miracle in my name can easily speak ill of me, because he who is not against us is upon our side. And whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of the Messiah, I tell you indeed that he shall by no means go unrewarded. And on the other hand, whoever causes one of the weakest believers in me to fall, it would be much better for him to have a large millstone hung round his neck and be flung into the sea. If even your hand should cause you to fall, cut it off. It will be better for you to enter into life maimed than possessing both hands to go into Gehenna, into the inextinguishable fire, where their worm never ends and the fire is not quenched. And if your foot leads you astray, cut it off. It will be better for you to enter into life lame than having two feet to be flung into Gehenna, into the inextinguishable fire, where their worm never ends and the fire is not quenched. And if your eye makes you fall, throw it away. It will be better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with but one eye than possessing both eyes to be thrown into the fire of Gehenna, where their worm never ends and the fire is not quenched. For every one shall be salted by fire, as every sacrifice is salted with salt. Salt is useful, but if the salt rock should become saltless, how can itself be seasoned? Have salt in yourselves, and live at peace together. Chapter 10 Arising from there, he then proceeded to the borders of Judea by way of the farther side of the Jordan, and a crowd again rushed together about him, and, as was his custom, he again taught them. The Pharisees also approached him with the inquiry, Is it legal for a man to repudiate his wife? thus testing him. What did Moses order you? he asked them in reply. Moses, they answered, gave permission to secure a divorce and to send her away. Because of your brutality he wrote you that order, said Jesus to them. But God made them male and female from the beginning of creation. On account of this a man must leave his father and his mother and cling to his wife, and the two shall be as one body, so that they are no more two, but a single body. What therefore God has yoked together, let man not separate. While in the house his disciples again asked him about this statement, and he answered them, Whoever may repudiate his wife and marry another commits adultery against her. And if a woman should repudiate her husband and marry another, she commits adultery. And when they were bringing children to him in order that he might touch them, his disciples repelled those who brought them. But Jesus, seeing it, became indignant and said to them, Allow the little children to come to me and do not prevent them, for of such is the kingdom of God. I tell you indeed that whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a little child, he can never by any means enter it. Then, having caressed them, placing his hands upon them, he blessed them. And as he was going out into the road, one ran up to him, and kneeling to him, asked him, Perfect teacher, what shall I do to inherit everlasting life? <laughs> Why do you call me perfect? asked Jesus in reply. None but one is perfect, God alone. You know the commands, You shall not commit adultery, You shall not murder, You shall not steal, You shall not commit perjury, You shall not cheat, Honor your father and mother. Teacher, he replied, All these I have observed from my youth. Jesus then, gazing at him, admired him and said, One thing is missing in you. Go away, sell whatever you possess, and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then follow me, carrying the cross. But he became crestfallen at that idea, and went away grieving, for he possessed many estates. Jesus then, looking round, remarked to his disciples, huh, With what difficulty can those who possess wealth enter the kingdom of God? His disciples, however, were amazed at his language. But Jesus, speaking to them again, said, Children, how hard it is for those who rely upon their wealth to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. They were then still more astonished than before, saying to one another, Who then can be saved? Jesus, gazing at them, replied, By human power it is impossible, 
but not with the help of God, for with God everything is possible. Peter then began to say to him, Why, we have abandoned all and followed you. I tell you indeed, said Jesus in reply, that no one who has abandoned home, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, on account of me and the good news, but will receive a hundredfold in the present time, with homes, brothers, sisters, mothers, children, and lands, together with persecutions, and in the world to come eternal life. But many first will be last, and the last first. They were now on the road, going up to Jerusalem, and Jesus was going in advance of them. And they were astonished, and followed him in terror. Then calling the twelve to him, he again began to tell them what would befall him in the future. Now, said he, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and professors, and they will condemn him to death, and hand him over to the heathen. They will also insult him, lash him, spit upon him, ay, and murder him. Yet at the close of three days he will rise again. James and John, the two sons of Zebedee, then approached him, saying, Teacher, we would like you to do for us whatever we may ask you. What do you wish me to do for you? he asked them. Grant us, they replied, that in your majesty we may be seated, the one upon your right hand, and the other upon your left. <laughs> you know not what you ask, said Jesus to them. Are you able to drink the cup of which I drink, or to be baptized in the baptism in which I shall be baptized? We are able, was their reply. Jesus, however, said to them, You shall certainly drink of the cup of which I drink, and you shall be baptized with the baptism in which I shall be baptized. But to sit upon my right hand and upon my left is not mine to give, except to those for whom it is prepared. And when the ten heard it, they were very indignant concerning James and John. But Jesus, calling them to him, said to them, You know that those chosen to govern the heathen lord it over them, and their nobles also domineer over them. But it must not be so among you. On the contrary, if any one wishes to take rank among you, let him become your servant. And whoever among you wishes to be exalted to a leadership, let him be slave for all. For indeed the Son of Man came not to be served, but on the contrary, to serve, and to sacrifice his life a ransom for many. Then they arrived at Jericho, and as he was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside, begging. And hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to call out and say, Jesus! Son of David, pity me! And many reproved him to make him keep silent, but he rather called out more loudly, O oh, son of David, do pity me! Jesus then, standing still, said, Call him. So hailing the blind man, they said to him, Take heart, get up, he calls you. Throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came toward Jesus. What do you wish that I should do for you? Jesus asked him. Great master, the blind man answered him, that I may see again. Go away, said Jesus in reply to him. Your faith has saved you. And he saw again immediately and followed Jesus along the road. Chapter 11 And when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany, towards the Mount of Olives, he sent forward two of his disciples, instructing them, Go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you enter it you will find a colt upon which no man has ever been seated. Unfasten it and bring it. And should any one ask you, Why are you doing this? Reply, Because the master has need of it, and he will at once send it. They accordingly went and found a colt tied up against the door outside in the open street, and they unfastened it. And some of those who were standing about asked them, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered just as Jesus had instructed them, they then allowed them. And they took the colt to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks over it, he took his seat upon it. Then many spread their cloaks upon the road, while others cut off foliage from the trees and scattered them upon the pathway. And those in advance and those in the rear shouted, exclaiming, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed be the approaching kingdom of our father David! Hosanna in the highest! 
then entering jerusalem and the temple he examined everything but it being now late he returned again to bethany together with the twelve and on the morning following when leaving bethany he was hungry and seeing at a distance a fig tree with leaves he went to see if he could find anything upon it on coming to it however he found nothing but leaves for it was not a good fig year then addressing it he said never from now let any one eat fruit from you and his disciples heard him they then arrived at jerusalem and jesus entering the temple began to expel the buyers and sellers from the temple overturning the tables of the money brokers as well as the stands of the pigeon dealers while he would not allow any one to carry an article through the temple he also taught saying to them is it not written my house shall be set apart as a house of prayer for all the nations but you have turned it into a cave of robbers when the chief priests and professors heard it however they planned how they could murder him for they were afraid of him because all the masses were struck with admiration at his teaching but when evening came he went out of the city when returning in the early morning they observed the fig tree withered from the root and peter remembering said to him rabbi look the fig tree which you denounced is withered jesus addressing them then said have faith in god i tell you indeed that if you should say to this mountain be taken away and flung into the sea and should not doubt in your heart but believe that what you say could be it will be done as you shall say i therefore tell you that whatever you ask for in prayer believe that you will receive it and it shall come to you and when you stand praying if you have anything against anyone forgive it so that your father who is in heaven may forgive you your own trespasses but if you will not forgive your father who is in heaven will not forgive your trespasses when they returned to jerusalem and while he was walking in the temple the chief priests professors and elders approached and asked him by what authority do you do this and who gave you that authority so that you should do it i will myself ask you one question said jesus in reply to them and on answering me i will in return give you my authority for acting as i do was the baptism of john from heaven or from men can you answer me they accordingly consulted privately among themselves saying if we answer from heaven he will ask why then did you not believe him but should we say from men they dreaded the people because all believed that john was really a prophet in reply they therefore said to jesus we do not know and jesus answering said to them neither do i tell you by what authority i act in this way chapter twelve he now began to speak to them in parables a man he said planted a vineyard surrounded it with a fence dug out a wine vat built a watch-tower let it out to cultivators and took his departure and at the right time he sent a messenger to the tenants in order that he might receive from the tenants the rent of the vineyard but seizing him they lashed him and sent him away without anything again he sent another messenger to them but at him they threw stones injured his head and maltreated him most disgracefully then he sent still another and they murdered him and of many others some were lashed and some murdered having still a very dearly loved son he even sent him to them at the last thinking they will surely respect my son but the cultivators said to one another since this fellow is the heir come on let us murder him and the estate will be our own then seizing him they murdered him and flung him outside the vineyard what therefore will the owner of the vineyard do he will come and put an end to these tenants and hand the vineyard over to others was their reply then did you never read the scripture a stone which the builders rejected that same one was made the chief keystone it was done by the lord and is wonderful in our eyes and they longed to arrest him but they dreaded the crowd for they perceived that he had spoken the parable against themselves so leaving him alone they took their departure they then sent to him some of the pharisees and of the herodians so that they might ensnare him in discussion and when they came they said to him teacher we know that you are to be trusted and that you are partial to none for you do not study a man's face but on the contrary truthfully teach the way of god is it right to pay tribute to caesar or not shall we pay or ought we not to pay he however knowing their deception replied why do you tempt me bring me a denarius so that i may see it and on their producing one he asked them whose is this portrait and inscription caesar's was their reply 
Jesus then answered them, Give back to Caesar Caesar's own, and to God what belongs to God. And they were very much surprised at him. The Sadducees, who hold that there is no resurrection, afterwards came to him with a question, Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if anyone dies, leaving a wife childless, then his brother must take his widow and rear children to his brother. There were seven brothers, and the first took a wife and died without leaving offspring. And the second married her and died, leaving no children behind him, so also the third. Indeed, the whole seven married her and left no children. Last of all, the woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, when they will all rise, of which one of them will she be the wife? For all the seven married that woman. <sighs> Are you not in deep error respecting this? said Jesus in reply to them, on account of your ignorance of the scriptures and the power of God, because when they rise from the dead they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as angels in heaven. But with respect to the dead, that they are raised, have you not read in the book of Moses how God spoke to him at the bush, saying, I, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of dead, but of living men." you are consequently greatly mistaken. One of the professors, hearing their discussion and finding that he had answered them well, now asked him, What is the most important of all the commands? The first, answered Jesus, is, Israel, listen, the Lord our God is one Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and all your soul, and all your intellect, and all your strength. That is the first command, and the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as your own self. No other commands are greater than these. The professor then said to him, Teacher, you have spoken the truth admirably. For one he is, and apart from him there is no other. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the intellect, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself, is better than all the burnt offerings and sacrifices. Jesus, seeing that he answered intelligently, said to him, <laughs> you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, none dared again to question him. Now while teaching in the temple, Jesus inquired, How can the professor say that the Messiah is a son of David? David himself, under the influence of the Holy Spirit, said, The Lord said to my Lord, Be seated on my right hand until I place your enemies beneath your feet. David himself calls him his Lord, in what way is he then his son? And the many listened to him with the greatest of pleasure. In the course of his teaching he told them, Be on your guard against the professors who delight to walk about in flowing robes, to be addressed in the markets, who secure the front seats in the synagogues, and the places of honor at banquets. They desolate the homes of widows, and then gabble long prayers by way of extenuation. Their punishment, however, will be all the more severe." While seated opposite the treasury, Jesus observed how the crowd threw money into the treasure chest, and much was thrown into it by the rich people. A poor widow coming up, however, put in two lepta, which make a quadrantes. Then calling his disciples, he said to them, hm, I tell you indeed that this same poor woman has put more into the treasury than all the others, for they all gave but a part of their superfluity, while she in her poverty threw in all she possessed, the whole of her living. The end of chapters 9 through 12. Recording by Mark Penfold.